Martin Popoff here for the Contrarians. This is uh, some Patreon exclusive content. So thank you very much for being a Patreon supporter of the Contrarians, uh, subscribing and all that. And hopefully you're commenting and everything, um, which is really cool. We love reading the comments. Um, so yeah, what, I'm, uh, what I've decided I'm going to be doing with my exclusive Patreon uh content is uh is building upon the episode where we talked about bands you won't see on the um the contrarians because i don't feel my personal choice for favorite album by these bands uh is uh, a very contrarian choice so it would go against uh the grain of the original concept of the show so um this uh this episode or this short segment is going to be on this band stars and uh, and there's a uh, a framed picture of my favorite stars album. Um, you know, uh, I I frame these up when I get things signed, and I uh, I've got a bunch of these uh, cheap frames you can buy at the craft store. Don't drop these uh, because the glass breaks uh, very 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 easily on them. Um, but uh, but yeah, so stars. Um, this, this great band uh, out of the East Coast. Um, they're a little bit like Cheap Trick and Aerosmith and Kiss and Rex and Moxie and all those all those bands. Um, but out of all of them, I would say they're they're most like Kiss. Um, and they they had these uh, these sort of simple songs, simple on purpose. You knew that they could do a lot more than they than they were doing, but they they kept it simple and the productions were simple, bright, correct. But uh, but not too much uh, put put on top of them, and uh, and a lot of their anthems were in this kind of like poppy hard rock zone with some heavier songs and with some more expensive experimental songs as well. But uh, you know, rock and roll over, Love Gun, uh, Destroyer, maybe well not so much the early stuff, Dressed to Kill and Back, but but they 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 really do capture that vibe of that uh, of that seventies U.S. Uh, hard rock sound. Um, so yeah, a little show and tell. You've seen that. Here is the uh, here is the ad for uh, for Violation. This is uh, probably out of a um, circus magazine. You got a, you got a Jay Giles on the back there. Um, <clears throat> this is the other album people would pick from the Stars, possibly as the favorite Stars album. But I, I think uh, without a doubt, I, I mean, you know, overwhelmingly, I, I think people would go for Violation. Violation is kind of their um, ambitious but still heavy. Uh, kind of doppelganger version of Kiss Destroyer, I think, in a way. Um, and uh, you know, 1977, it's the peak of stars after the, uh, you know, the 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 good the good reception uh, this one got. I don't know if you can see it, but it's a uh, it's an embossed cover. So this is all raised, the yellow part here. And there's that picture of the band where they're looking all dramatic and cool and rock starry. Um, there's Michael Lee Smith right in the middle there. He's your uh, he's your lead singer, brother of uh, Rex Smith, an amazing lead singer. The drummer Joe Doobie. Yeah. My my uh, my pointing is uh, opposite here on the camera. Uh, Brendan Richie Rano over here. Um, so yeah, um, good band, good album, um, pretty heavy album. We liked it, um, but it's a little raw compared to Violation, which has um, you know more or less their their anthems their best songs on it here hang on what else we got for there's a there's a little picture of stars there sign um so yeah and this is this is the stars patch um that i think it came with the debut album i believe um anyways um uh, yeah great band um but what they did when I say great band, I mean, I really uh, honestly believe that. Uh, so what happened next after Violation? No one's going to be picking this one. Uh, this is when they went really poppy. We were horrified when this record came out, 1978. Um, as you can see, they're, they're ditching the hard rock look and trying to look poppy. We've even got Richie Rano there trying to look a little bit like... Uh, uh, Rick Nielsen from Cheap Trick, I would say. I never really noticed that before. Um, this has two of the greatest star songs of all time on it uh, in X-Ray Specs and Good Ale We Seek, um, but nothing else on this record was heavy. So that was really crazy uh, seeing that happen. Um, and then what happened is they came back with Coliseum Rock, which found them rocking out again. But the problem with this record is that the performances are so polite and locked down and the, and the production, this is produced by Jack Richardson, Nimbus nine up at the soundstage, Toronto, Canada. And the production is so 
tight and cloistered and conservative, a little bit like Tom Werman's production for Weekend Warriors, I would say. Um, that uh, even if these songs are fairly heavy and fairly good, especially like Don't Stop Now and Where Will It End, So Young, So Bad was a good, good one of their rock and ballads like Cherry Baby off of Violation, um, Take Me, No Regrets. Um, you know, uh, Coliseum Rock was a... Um, instrumental on here it's a riot so this was a pretty heavy album and i have seen some people cite this as their favorite stars album um it's the last one they ever did so it's just the four albums this also came out in 1978 so they got two records out in 78 um but you know to to believe that i think you have to almost um almost say i'm i'm really only thinking about the songs and not really the performance or the production because that's that's where that record falls down, unfortunately. Um, but Violation, here's my CD version of Violation. Uh, Violation is just well-sequenced and really cool start to finish. Cherry Baby is this really cool pop hit, uh, but it's still somewhat hard rocky. Rock six times, fairly heavy, sing it, shout it. Sounds like one of those dopey kiss songs, but it's it's likable enough. Violation is amazing. Subway Terror is amazing. Those are the two kind of heavy epic tunes uh, that everybody loves. All Night Long is all right. Cool One is uh, is experimental. Steady is is really cool. Um, uh, that's the one that's kind of um, kind of like a slow shuffly boogie. And is that a street light or the moon? Again, kind of experimental. But really, um, everything on here. Uh, kind of fits the sequence of things and you're and you're happy for the experiments on it and you're and you're certainly happy for the heavy stuff as well um i didn't realize this i'm just looking at it now also produced by jack douglas or no sorry yeah that's the thing see i always i've always got jack richardson and jack douglas when i'm not thinking about it enough um mixed up and that's a bad bad thing because jack richardson is the canadian dude um and, uh, you know, associated with Bob Ezrin and all that. But Jack Douglas is your Aerosmith dude, right? So, um, so Jack Douglas is the, is the great, great producer of those, uh, of those classic Aerosmith albums like Toys in the Attic and Rocks and stuff. And really, um, he does, does a really good bang up job on this one. Um, just want to check here. Yeah, so the debut, the debut also is Jack Douglas. And again, good, warm, raw 70s analog um, production job, but not too raw, really good guitar sound. Um, so these, these, both these records sound really bright, but yeah, just to, uh, just to encapsulate, um, I think the overwhelming choice for favorite stars album, I, again, they only made four, um, uh, would, would be violation. I, I do think it's their, uh, kiss destroyer. So there you go. I'll wrap it up there. Thanks again. Um, I love doing this exclusive Patreon stuff because I know um, you are uh, are dedicated, dedicated fans of uh, the Contrarians. So um, stay tuned. There will be more.